Hi everybody. Well this time I'm going to make a yellow mango curry fish. So I'm just going to start off by first preparing my eggplants or aubergine and if you can get the small Thai apple aubergine or eggplants that's any bit even better, Ariella Blue. But because I'm using these large purple eggplants, it's best to peel off the skin. But if you were using the Thai eggplants, leave the skin on. I'm just going to cut them into chunks about this big. And I'm going to place these into a large bowl like this just to soak in plain water until I'm ready to cook them and I soak them just to get a lot of the bitterness out so I'll continue preparing these aubergines and then I'll show you what I do next So with these bad boys all cut up, I'm just going to place them aside until I'm ready to cook them. So I have here a good large bunch of spring onions and I'm just going to chop the whole lot up into about half inch slices. The green and the white bit. And I'm using these for their flavour as well as their colour. And discarding the ends of the leaves. I'm now going to place these aside as well until I'm ready to fry these up with my curry paste. So now to make my curry paste and I have here my large Thai mortar and pestle but you can certainly do it in a blender if you so wish. So I'm going to start off by adding one star anise. Add six cloves.
one teaspoon of white peppercorns, but you could use black peppercorns if you don't have any of the white ones. One teaspoon of raw sugar, which will help break everything down. And you could also add a little bit of salt to help break things down as well. And I have here one lemongrass, which I'm just going to peel off all the tough leaves. And I'm actually going to put them in a bit of a notch and put that aside and I'll cook that in with my curry for extra flavour and then take it out just before serving. It's really tough and discarding that I'm going to very finely chop this up Place this into my Thai mortar and pestle or coke as it's often called. And I'm going to start pounding this up until it resembles a coarse paste. see that's breaking down nicely so we're now ready to add the next ingredient so I'm going to add to this six candle nuts I have here some small Thai green chilies, so I'm going to add six of those to my Thai border and pestle. shallots that I'm just going to quickly peel and 
I just cut them into chunks to add to my mortar and pestle. And if you can't get shallots, you could always use a little bit of red onion, but I do prefer the flavour of red shallots in this. I'm going to add a good teaspoon of curry powder, hot curry powder. And I have here some pieces of galangal, ginger and turmeric. So I'm just going to peel them and prepare them. So I have here the turmeric cut up and it's a bit over an inch lump of turmeric. And you can see the wonderful orange colour. But you do need to be careful and I probably should have used gloves as it can discolour the hands but anyway I'm going to chop this up it also into my Thai water and pestle or coke and I have here a lump of galangal which I'm just going to cut up or process a bit over an inch size knob of that Add each size knob of this ginger. So I'm going to peel that up and then I'll cut it up the same as the turmeric. And Galagal is a relative of ginger, but it has a stronger, slightly different flavour and it's often far more stringy than ginger so just cutting this down well and now cutting up my ginger to my Thai border and pestle. And I'm going to get a couple of cloves, large cloves of garlic. And because I'm making a fish curry and I don't want the garlic to be that strong, I'll use two cloves. But you could always use four cloves if you so desire. So placing that also into my mortar and pestle. I'm now going to crush the rest of this down into a nice paste. This 
so now after working this down and pounding it for about 10 or 15 minutes we've come to a rough paste and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Thai fish sauce to this and mix everything really well and I'll leave this aside until I'm ready to fry it off so while I prepare everything I'm going to now place my oven on to preheat to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius as I'm going to grill off my fish for my curry. So I have here three long red chilies and these are more for colour than providing any heat. I'm just going to cut them up into slices placing them aside until I'm ready to cook with them add three large mangoes which I'm just going to attempt to cut open Try not make a mess as my peeler won't quite handle that. And I'm just going to scoop the flesh out into this bowl and I'll place it aside until I'm ready to cook my curry. So I have here two to three cups of mango pulp and I'm just going to place this in my refrigerator until I'm ready for it. So now onto my next step. I have here a large bag of pollock fillets but any white fish will work really well. And I'm going to use a little bit of light olive oil but peanut oil or another light vegetable oil will work really well and I'm just going to brush this well across the bottom of my baking dish just so things don't stick and layer out a good pound of these fillets
red Altus brush, a little bit of olive oil over the tops of these as well. And I'm going to place this into my oven to bake probably for about 30 minutes but until it's really cooked through because I want the fish to be nice and firm. So now moving on to the step of cooking up my curry paste. I'm going to put my wok onto a medium flame. Add a little bit of light vegetable oil into the bottom of my wok. Add twirling the oil around well to coat the bottom of the wok. And if you're making a half mixture or half recipe, I would use half the paste and the other half I would just put into a jar and freeze. And just getting a little bit of water into your Thai mortar and pestle. I'm going to rinse this off and later I'll add it to this paste. And you do want to be careful not to burn this, but just to dry it a little until it's aromatic. the mortar and pestle I'm just going to put this in with and reduce everything down in my spring onions and reducing the heat I'm now going to add two cans of coconut cream everything through really well and adding in my second can and you can use coconut milk but I prefer to use coconut cream and then just to add a little bit of water as I require. So mixing everything through, I'm now going to bring this up to a gentle simmer.
So with this coming up to a gentle simmer, I can see with all the ingredients that I have that I'm going to be needing a larger pot. So I'm just going to transfer this into a larger pot and letting this come up to a simmer. I'll then add my next ingredients. as well as one dessert spoon full of Thai fish sauce and mixing everything through really well I'm going to add in my mango pulp Stir this through and this dish that I'm making is from the south of Thailand and the north of Malaysia so it is a bit of a fusion with different variations on both sides of the border and I'll just give this a bit of a taste test just to see if I need to add any sugar or extra salt or whatever. And that's lovely. So I'm just going to drain my eggplant now and add that in. mixing everything through. I'm now going to bring this up to a simmer and I'm going to let it simmer until the eggplant is nice and soft. So in about 30 minutes or an hour I'll be back to check this and we'll see how we're coming along. So my curry has been simmering away for about 30 minutes so I'm just going to give it a quick taste test and it's definitely spicy enough but it wants a bit of extra salt so I'm just going to add a little bit more fish sauce about a dessert spoon full of lime juice about a teaspoon of raw sugar giving everything a good mix and as you can see I did put my lemongrass leaves in here just to extract some flavour out of them 
and my eggplant does need to cook a little bit more but I'll just test my flavour again oh and that's lovely so I'm just going to let this simmer away for an extra 30 minutes so I guess it's probably simmered for about an hour so far and my fish has just finished baking and that's looking lovely so I'm just going to leave that aside until I'm ready to serve so I'll be back in about 30 minutes to serve my meal okay so my curry is looking very close to being done so I'm going to pull out these pieces of lemongrass and discard them as they've now finished doing their job this a stir it looks wonderful so I'll turn off the heat and I'll get ready to serve so I have here some sticky rice today I like to have this one for a change at times so getting a good bowl full of that and getting out my fish pieces of fish over the top of my rice and getting a bowl of my curry and you can see this curry is a wonderful yellow colour While I'm here, I'm going to ask you all to please watch my videos through to the end. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and smash that little bell to get alerts. So it's now time for a taste test. So just getting a little bit more fish. And a little bit of rice. Just going to scoop a little bit of curry here with this. That's so delicious. So, until next time.